I don't know about you, but when I look at this web uh, implement, I'm thinking Orcish Cleaver. Probably not something you've seen before. It's from Italy, called a Baidana. The time frame depends on who you ask. Definitely 17th century. Usually uh, 16th and 18th is included as well. But how far back it goes is debatable. It depends on when you want to start calling it a Baidana. Back in history, people weren't as concerned with labels as we are nowadays. They would often just call something a a knife or a sword or regardless of what individual type because they didn't do typology as such but um, there is a lineage going back pretty far all the way back to Lombardian knives uh, these are examples from the 8th and 9th century they already have this tang hook and the shape starts to look similar but you wouldn't call this a Baidana yet. Typically it's said that they occurred between the 12th and 18th century. Most of the examples I found were from the 16th to 18th century if they were dated. Not very well known. In fact, I managed to stump ChatGPT by asking about it. It had nothing, not even a guess. So is it a tool or a weapon? That also depends on who you ask. Sometimes they're labeled as weapons some people say it's both, and some say it's agricultural tools only. I'm leaning toward both. There is one particular example that makes me think it was designed as a weapon. This one here, because it has a blunt ricasso, uh, meaning there's a section of the blade which is completely unsharpened. That's typically a feature of a weapon simply because with a weapon, you if you strike with it, you're not going to do it with that part of the blade, and you're more likely to block or parry with that part. So it doesn't need to be sharp, and there is an argument to be made in favor of leaving it blunt, because that way you, it doesn't get damaged as much. Whereas with a tool, you might actually want the entire blade to be sharpened because even if it's a machete, there are situations in everyday life where you might want to slice something as opposed to using percussive chops. In that case, you would use a section of the edge close to the handle for the right leverage. This is still ambiguous because it does not have a guard. If it had a guard as well, in addition to the Ricasso, it would be fairly clear cut. As it is, I would still say the Ricasso is a strong argument for a weapon design. There's another one, a Baidana, which is also a polearm. This is a very interesting one. What would be the handle on a sword or machete also serves as a socket for mounting as a polearm here. And of course, a polearm is a weapon. So at least some of them were intended as weapons. I'm thinking most likely both, both tool and weapon, because they didn't necessarily distinguish as much, especially when it comes to commoners. Is it nobility knights would have dedicated weapons, but commoners would benefit more from something that fulfills both roles because they wouldn't really want to invest money into just a weapon that they can't use for everyday tasks. Anyway, as is usually the case in history with handmade objects, there's plenty of variation. There are different shapes. Uh, these are generally single-edged, and the most distinctive feature of this design is the hook at the end of the grip, which is formed by the tang. Uh, this is similar to the Czech Dosak, which also has a D-guard that the tang forms. The Baidana can also have a D-guard. So pretty similar in that regard, but the Baidana, as opposed to the Dosak, does not have a point. The blade commonly widens into a cleaver-like profile, although not always. Some are surprisingly narrow throughout. And another distinctive feature, which is not present on all of them, but fairly common again, is a hook at the end. This can be a simple curved bar, or it can be a full-on billhook style with a sharpened edge. In fact, I found one that has two of them. That one's kind of bizarre. The function of the billhook style is clear enough. It has plenty of uses, be it for trimming trees or clearing underbrush, things of that nature. These were often used on vineyards, apparently. But when it's just a curved bar, it's interesting because usually, from what I've seen, they uh, are curved so far that they touch the... Uh, 
spine of the blade. One plausible use would be for hanging them on the wall, even though you could also use the hook on the other end for that. Sometimes they have a cutout as well at the end of the blade, which would be useful for that as well, but some of them have both, both the cutout and the hook. Uh, one unconventional use we see in The Witcher of all places, the series. Remember this guy from the Blaviken fight? I've seen people comment on it, dismissing it as just fantasy nonsense, but clearly it's based on a Beidana. At least it looks very much like it. And uh, the way he uses it is very unconventional. He's uh, reverse gripping it and holding on to that part at the end. They've made it larger to allow for that. The funny thing is, even if you hate the reverse grip in media, this is actually a pretty decent design for it because that knuckle guard solves one of the big problems of the reverse grip, the hand being extremely exposed. It's actually not so bad. And it has a rec blunt ricasso apparently as well for blocking there. There are also very short cleaver versions of these, which would suggest tool use mainly, although... Good old times, huh? No internet, no phones, just people living in the moment. Anyway, even though the Beidana is generally overlooked and rarely seen, I found a surprising number of original finds, actually. They come in a number of different forms, but all distinctive, all recognizable as Beidana. It's one of these historical designs that look a lot like fantasy, even though they were actually real. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, found this interesting. Thanks for watching and take care.